For she said, If I be touched, what is done is clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Of that plague. You can see there. She said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. She became desperate. She became what? Desperate. Until a person becomes desperate and says, enough is enough. Usually, a miracle does not happen. You say, ah, you are managing that situation, so you are managing it. Until you get to a point that this situation must change. That situation usually don't change. You know, and that's why if you look at somebody like David, Second Samuel 24, 16. You can see what he said. Second Samuel 24, 16. To Second Samuel 24, 16. Second Samuel 24, 16. He said, when the angel stretched out his hand about Joseph to destroy the Lord, repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, it is enough. Stay now the hand and the angel of the law by the threshold of Aruna. But if you look at what David said in 2 Samuel 24, 24, it was a man that he said to himself, enough is enough. 2 Samuel 24, 24, and the king said unto Aruna, nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at the price. Neither will I offer bond of faith unto the Lord, my God of that which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshold and the ozone for 15 shekel of silver. This man got to a situation, he said, enough is enough. So you want to tr transform a situation, you want to have great turnaround, what you must do, the first thing you must do, you must get tired of that situation, you must become desperate. And when you become desperate, what happens? Usually, there will be a change. You have become a I become a change. I remember <laughs> a true story. I would pray with somebody. One brother, he had cancer. With the glory of God, I said to him, God has said to me, you are going to be healed. So the first day I prayed with him, I said, but I can see you being healed. He said, are you sure? I said, what do you need to do now? Be desperate. Pray five hours every day. <laughs> he was praying. Praying tongues. Say it was, it was not covenant because he will go to is a lawyer. But you know, suddenly, because he was desperate, that cancer disappeared from his life. And he's still alive today. Why? Because he was, he said, enough is enough. And he said something to me. He said, Do I know his younger one have died of this situation? And he had made up his mind he will not die. He had made up his mind he will not that he needs solution. So did that is why I, the Bible tells in Matthew 11, 12, Matthew 11, 12, he said the violent take it by Matthew 11, 12. So when we say the violent there is the one that say, I am desperate, I am tired of this situation, I want solution. Matthew 11, 12, Jesus said, the violent take it by force. The violent take it by force. I remember when we were in Uniben then, 86, 80, about 89, uh, there was a course around 86, 87. There was a course, I don't like history. I like math. <laughs> and it was just basically history, business history. And I just said to myself, this thing, I must be desperate and pass it. I'm, I have made up my mind I will never have a receipt in the university. <laughs> I was desperate. I was reading it, cramming it. You know, in Nigeria, you cram everything. <laughs> and I read it, and I had B plus because I was desperate. And so many people now carried over. I said to myself, I have to be desperate because I've made up my mind. I must make it. Praise him. Amen. Then you want to provoke 
a great honor. Another thing you must do is what they call fervent prayers. What do they call it? You can see a true story. Genesis 32, 24 to 28. Genesis 32, 24 to 28. Genesis 32. If you are there, quickly read it, please. Genesis 32, 24 to 28. Prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and as he wrestled with him, and he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh, and he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is it? What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, <coughs> Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, as thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed, and has prevailed. You can see here this man, <laughs> Jacob, he knew that his brother was coming. He needed a divine intervention, or else he would be destroyed. He prayed to God until there was a change. Fervent prayers. Fervent what? Prayers. Is there any person that there was a situation, you prayed, and something happened. You, 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 you did not stop praying until something happened. Is there any person, that you have a testimony. You prayed until something happened. Is there any person, you have a testimony. You prayed until something happened. Is there any person, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. One minute. Um, when I finished school in San Francisco, and we moved to Sacramento, me and my sister, we didn't know how to look for a job. But I had bought a house, and I didn't know what it means to pay mortgage and all that, you know. So we needed money. We needed money. So I went to a seminar, and they taught us how to visualize as uh, in Habakkuk 2, 3, 2, or something like that, where it says, yeah, where it says, um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it says, um, though it tarries, uh, wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And so, one of the things they taught us was to go and get play money. So, I went to the store and bought play money and see the dog. And I don't like animals, but this guy that came to rent the, the house brought a dog. So, so we got all that all within one week because I was desperate. Amen. Praise my God. Is there any other person you prayed and something happened? Because this month we are getting to, to that turn around. You prayed, something happened? Yes, mom. I've given the testimony here again and again. My um, daughter was in a situation where I didn't even have to see my grandchildren. And um, it bothered my spirit for a very long time, and I was praying. The more I pray, the more I wasn't seeing result or solution. But um, last year, when I started giving testimony, everything turned around. As I speak, I have my grandchildren with me. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I have, I just remember, Holy Spirit reminded me something. Sometimes I was in a camp in Lagos. And we just went to see him on Friday, and we saw that the leg was swollen. <laughs> but anyway, I said, ah, this boy, we're going to take him home. I said, don't worry, we have come to pray. Before tomorrow morning, this leg will normalize. And to the glory of God, we were just praying till the next morning. By the time we got to the hostel the next morning, the leg has normalized. Because we were desperate that that leg must I want to stand up and tell God, Zechariah 12, 10, fire of prayer, come upon me now. I want to stand up and tell God, fire of prayer, come upon me. Father, strengthen my prayer life. Fire of prayer, be recruited in my life. Tell the Almighty God, fire of prayer, be recruited in my life. And help me to pray through. Fire of prayer, ah, be recruited in my life. Fire of fervent prayer, 
Eli with Zechariah 12, he said, the fire of, oh, regard by the spirit of grace and supplication. Oh, Father, tell the Almighty God, ah, fire of prayer, be rekindled by life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, fire of prayer. In the name of Jesus. Be good to my life, no more Jesus. Rika Gadaba do Goria. Nyagadaba do Goria do Goria no more Sotoria. Oh, fire of prayer, break. Oh, the spirit of grace and supplication come upon me. Hear the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we so in Jesus' name? Shall we so in Jesus' name? Let us be seated, please. Another key to provoking your miracle is rugged faith. What do we call it? Rugged faith. These are things that if you practice them, it will manifest. Rugged what? Let's look at one example there. First King 18. This is Elijah. A man like us. First King 18, 41 to 46. First King 18, 41 to 46. If you are there quickly reading. First King 18, 41 to 46. You can see here is a classical example of what? Rugged faith. Or maybe some people call it violent faith. Because that first King 18, 41 to 46, God told Elijah, by this time tomorrow there will be showers of rain. And you know, in that time, three and a half years there will no rain. Three and a half years there will no like one day now, maybe God just say, my brother, where should you become a mortal billionaire? You say, ah, God, how would this one be? If you don't have faith, you just disconnect containers it. What did he do? He stood on that word. God told him, first K 41. He stood on that word and prayed until this miracle happened. Because do you even know there were Reason for him to be discouraged because he told the servant to go and check. And what happened? Someone said there are no sign of rain. No. There are no sign of rain. But because he knew what God had told him, he stood on that word and prayed until his miracle happened. So the total turn around. For it to happen to us, you must identify the word of God that God has given you. Stand on that word and pray until your miracle happen. Because he, he, God just gave you that word. He did not waver. That's why his servant said, ah, there is no sign. He stood on that word and prayed there until his miracle happen. And pray that somebody's eyes or understand will be open. You will stand on the, the word of God and pray until your miracle happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any person, God will give you a word and you stood on it and it and it worked for you? Any person? Yes, sir. Look at, yes. Okay. Then after. Yes, sir. Yeah, um. <coughs> Um, sometimes um, I go through a lot and whenever I pray, God tells me just be focused and at the same time stick onto the word of God. Man, most importantly, prayer has really helped me a lot um, because 
2018 was a very bad year for me. But since 2019, I've been saying that, you know, turn around and a lot of miracles has happened in my life to the day. Yes. That's all. You see, when you get a word, you stand on it. Not just get it the word that matters. Then, okay, one minute, please, mommy. In 2008, and, and, uh, and also, I forget. Okay. So, before I brought my kids, I was worried. I didn't know how to go about it. So, I started fasting. I had joined the church in, Sacra in Oakland, and they were doing fasting. So, I followed them. Then, in the night, about 3 a.m., God woke me up and gave me, my Bible was by my best time, so I opened it and I, I read Job 22, verse 27 and 28, where it says, Thou shalt make thy prayers unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, so that light will shine upon your ways. I never read that before. I didn't know what it was, but I took it. God was speaking to me. So I quickly got up, went to the computer, typed it out, made three copies, put one on the screen of my computer, took one, put it on the steering of my car so I can see it every day. <laughs> Amen. And then took one and put it in to the computer in my office. I started praying on that, and it has done wonders for me. Amen. You know, Wonderful, 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 wonderful is the Lord. I want to stand up and tell you, allow the feature 118. Father, let my eyes be open to your word. Father, let my eyes understand and be open to your word. Father, let my eyes understand and be open to your word. There are deep things in the word. Psalm 119 verse 18 says, Open down my eyes to wonder things in your word. Open my eyes. To wonder things in your world. Open my eyes to wonder things in your world. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we so in Jesus' name? Let us be seated. Another way you can activate and provoke your great turnaround is to make a vow and fulfill it. Tell somebody to make a vow and make a vow and what? Make a vow and is there any person that you made a vow and you you made a vow and that trans that brought a major turn around to you? Is there any person you made a vow and and it it helped it brought your miracle? Is there any person you made a vow to God? Eh? Okay, yes, my sister. Okay, this one. Yes, they are giving you the mic. Just one minute, please. I just made a vow. Um, it was a program, and the pastor had called for people to give a certain amount. So I took a step of faith, and I, I redeemed the vow. And um, in that season, some job that I did not even bargain for, you know, people were, like, begging me to do it. <laughs> Wonderful. So I did it, and... To God be the glory. I got more than I sold. So I know that vows work. Yes. Okay. Mommy, what did you were rising up? Yes, ma. Yeah. So on that uh, Job 22, verse 27 and 28, yeah. where it says, Thou shalt make thy prayers unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. So when I was trying to bring my kids, I was trying to bring my kids, and thou shalt pay thy vows. So when I was trying to bring my kids, Things were difficult, but I made a vow of giving the church, paying $1,000, you know, and uh, before December 31 of that year, 2015, 2014. So I fulfilled that, and my kids came. Amen. Eshum, Baba, Baba, Eshum, Eshum. But I want us to read the scripture, Ezekiel 5, 5, 4 to 6. You can see here, Ezekiel 5, 4 to 6. 
If you are there, quickly read it for us. God is already speaking to somebody what you need to do. And God will help you to do it in Jesus' name. He said, when thou vows a vow to God, defer not to pay, for it had no pleasure in fool. Pay that which thou had vowed. Better is it that should not vow, that thou should vow and not pay. Suffer not that mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Let us say before the angel, there was an error before. Wherefore, should God be angry at the voice of God? So, when one vow, and you don't make, you don't redeem, the tendency is that it can also destroy, hinders one's prosperity. God will show mercy in Jesus' name. But let's look at the example of somebody that made a vow, he redeemed it. First Samuel 1, 6 to 21. If you are there, quickly read it for us. You can see how she was able to get a major miracle. If you are there, please. From verse 6. Are we there? First Samuel 1, 6. From 6. But say, and her adversary provoked her soul, that is Hannah, for, to make her fret, because the Lord had shut her up her womb. And she did so year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Look at verse 8. Then Achan and her husband to her, Why weep thou? Why eat not thou not? Why is thy heart given? Am I not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose after they have eaten in Shiloh. After they have drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. She was bitter now also, and prayed to the Lord and wept. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, either we did look on the affliction of the handmaid, and remember me, and not forget the handmaid, I will give unto thee a handmaid, a man child, then I will give unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon him. And look at verse 12. The Bible says it came to pass. Tell somebody it came to pass. Tell somebody it came to pass. As you are making that vow, your own will come to pass. Your own will come to pass. And it came to pass, verse 12, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now, if you read this story true, because she made that vow, and God hand off the vow, and what finally happened? God settled her and did beyond her expectation. Did beyond her what? So that is the power of vow. So one way to activate and provoke your total turnaround is through paying your vows. Praise the Lord. Then very importantly, another way to provoke your great honor around is true violent praise. Everybody say violent praise. Is there any person that have used this violent praise to get a turn around or a miracle? Is there any person? You are able to praise God and things turn around for you. Is there any person? There was a time, at least there were situations, you wanted a change and you praise God till you change. Any person? I want us to learn from you. Yes, mom. You know, faith is building up now as we are hearing from people. We are not just hearing from the Bible because we are now become epistles. Yes, mom. Well, I used it when I first came to this country. Because everything was simply impossible. And uh, I prayed every prayer for that I thought I knew. Uh, nothing was changing. In fact, I was, uh, I don't know. I cannot even describe it. The only thing that was left for me to do was just to, was just to begin to praise God. Because I, mean, I didn't know what else to do. And as I continued to do so, I felt, I don't know, I could feel, uh, how do I put it? When you know that something has broken in the realm of the spirit. And uh, from there, everything took shape and all 
that I was trusting God for happened. Amen. I want you to just stand up for one minute. We are going to make joyful noise. Take your song and do your own dance. You are so good. Stand up and take, sing your song, dance your dance. God is going to do miracle in our life. You are so kind, Almighty God. You are so good. You are so kind, Almighty God. You are so good. You are so kind, Almighty God. You are so good. You are so kind, Almighty God. You are so good. You are so kind, Almighty God. You are so good. You are so kind, Almighty God. You are so good. You are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God, you are so good, you are so kind. Almighty God. I hear the Lord say to me now, Psalm 40, verse 3. That somebody here, God will give you a new song of victory. Amen. In Lamb Psalm 40, verse 3, it says he will give you a song of victory. Amen. Because you have danced and sang to him. From today, in Lamb Psalm 40, verse 3, we have received the song of victory. Amen. Let us be seated, please. Amen. Amen. Let me be faster now. Okay, another way you can provoke. The miracle of great one around is thinking, right thinking. Right what? Right what? Right thinking. Right what? Right thinking. Let's look at an example then before I ask. Number 13, 22, 33. A fast, very fast reader. Number 13, 22, 33. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people, nevertheless, we will be strong that dwell in the land and the cities walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell in the, by the sea and by the coast of the Jordan. And Caleb still the people therefore, um, Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to able. overcome it. You can see there two set of people Losers and winners. Losers and what? Why are the people that became losers, losers? Because of their thought. A lot of people became losers because of their thought. Because of their what? Because 10 people there said they are not able. But only two, Caleb and Joshua said we are well and when you now look at the story totally in the Bible, the other people were destroyed because of the wrong thought. Just because of the wrong thought. That because they just feel that they are able. Is there any person that sometimes ago, you just said to yourself, I can do it. And you are able to do it. Is there any person? You have a testimony. You just said within your heart, I can do it. And you are able to do it. Any person? One minute. Okay. Just one minute. Yeah. Um, last year, I started taking this uh, course, and it's like I wasn't comprehending it. So I was begging God, please rejuvenate my brain, rejuvenate my brain, rejuvenate my brain. So, and uh, I kept believing it. I kept thinking that, and eventually I was able to finish the course. <laughs> because she said she. She can do it in her heart. And that's why she was telling God you knew, that God should make her brain new. Is there another person? Because you taught well, you were able to think it. Let me ask a youth. 
Is there any time when you were in university, your thought helped you? When you were in university or now? Writing can help you to achieve greatness. Sorry, I'm trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely, positive thinking is very, very important in, in achieving the right goals. Um, the many times I've had pure thoughts or right thoughts about what I want and eventually came to pass. You know, so yes, yes, sir. Okay. It's just that I'm trying to think about the story, but <laughs> none is coming okay, to mind. True. Amen. I remember something now. You know, when we went to the embassy last is last year or the upper year, American embassy, more than 100 people in our front, they were giving them rejection, rejection, rejection. And it all said to myself, I were in the American embassy. And the USP said to me that the Bible tells Joshua 1 3. He said, Where did the soul of our fish are tread upon he has given us? Do I, do I know that we have got this visa? We were seated. I just said to myself, I've, I've got this visa. People were, even elderly people were being rejected. So I just told my darling wife, Please, I want to use the bathroom. He says, yeah, Everywhere you are using the bathroom now. So I just went to the bathroom, removed my shoe, removed my, I tread upon it. Do you know, as we just got there, just asked me two questions, he said, your visa is granted. Because it started with my, my thinking. I want to stand up and say, Father, give me breakthrough thought. Break, give me breakthrough thought. Remove thought of a loser. Father, give me breakthrough thought. Oh, Father, give me breakthrough thought. Ah, in the name of Jesus, remove the thought of a loser. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me break to thought. Father, just mighty, give me break to thought. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, powerful God, glorious God. Father, give me break to thought. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me break to thought. In the name of Jesus, help me to think of breakthrough, not to think as a loser. In the name of Jesus, oh, rega basotori, ada basotori, ada basekeri, anabade. Oh, thank you, my father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sit there, please. You know, as we are praying, the Holy Spirit brought to me one, to, uh, like a miracle. You know, then I was a banker, and there was a region I was up, um, uh, controlling. And one day, I just got to a particular branch. They were not doing very well in their operations. And I said to the man, do you know you can do better? And he looked at me. He said, Pastor, he said, you, you feel I can do better because they have recommended that I should sack him. And I just said to myself, as a pastor, I should help people. The best will come out of them. So as I just got to the branch, I said, ah, do you know you can even do better? This is what I want you to do. He said, are you sure? So you have confidence in me. Do you know that branch will transform? One day, he saw me somewhere in the street of Lagos. He, he had moved on to a bigger bank. And he stopped. He said, do you remember me? That they wanted to sack me the other time. And you told me that you can make it. And from there, he had confidence in himself that he can make it. And I pray that somebody here today, that thought that you can make it will come upon you. You will never be defeated in Jesus' name. Amen. Another way you can provoke your miracle is speaking the right word. Speak what? Speaking the right word. Speaking the right word. Why is this so? Your tongues control your life. Your tongue does what? You may just say, I'm speaking. Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs 18, 21. He said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Your tongues rules and controls your life. Because you are what you what you are today is what you said yesterday. And what you'll be tomorrow is what you are saying today.
That's why we read Hebrew level three. You can see how powerful our words are. Hebrew level three. Hebrew level three. Hebrew level three. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by the things which do appear. The word we speak can create. Can do what? Can create positive or negative. And that's why the word of God said in number 4028, number 4028, he said, as you have said in my ear, so will I do. That's why when people are under pressure, you should be careful what you say. When you're under pressure, be careful what you say, because that thing you are saying can determine what happened. You know, some people, <laughs> I remember, sometimes we go to camp, when those days, when there's so much hold up, some people, they won't even spot their prayers by saying, ah, this, uh, this camp serve. Your job is saying bad, bad things. And they have spoiled their prayers. Right, think, uh, right speaking. Speaking the right word. I remember a true story. I had gone to pray with two ladies. They are in Lagos. So they were sick. And as I prayed with one, he said, Pastor, I know that I've received my healing now. The other one, God show, show mercy, said, Pastor, she's not sure she will survive this sickness. So do you know that? No, three or four days, I heard that she died. In reality, to show the power in our tongue. To show the power in our, remember the Bible tells the poverty 21. He said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. That is why no matter what situation you are, speak the right word. Speak life. Call your tongue controls and control your life. Why is it so? Jesus said it in Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. You can see. Jesus, let me paraphrase it because of our time. Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. You shall have whatsoever you... Did he say you have whatsoever you pray? So people will pray. But what God is waiting for is for you to confess what you want. Because Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. He did not say you have whatsoever you pray. He said you shall have whatsoever you say. I pray that God will help us to speak the right, the right word in Jesus' name. Amen. Then, the next one is right actions. Right word? Right actions or complete obedience. Why? Because the Bible tells the first Samuel 23. I want to read this so that you can always remember this particular scripture. Anytime I read it, I'm afraid. First Talk I went to no more exceeding proudly. Let no arrogancy come out from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him all actions are weighed. By him all actions are... <laughs> so God is weighing every action you are taking. By him, by him, actions are weighed. Look at the word weighed. That means that these things are being recorded in heaven. No? They are being recorded. And that's why the word of God tells us it first in uh, Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12, 36. He says that every idle word shall be judged. Every idle word shall be. So that's why we must be careful. What we say or what we do. Amen. What are some of those right actions? Pay your tithe. Because somebody that does not pay his tithe, what happened? The person is cursed. Because that is why the Bible tells them Malachi 3, verse 8. Let me read to you so that you can see. You don't say that it's pastor that said it. Malachi 3, 8. He said, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Where have you robbed me? In tithe and offering. Then look at verse 9. He said, You are caused with the cause. You have robbed me. Even this whole. Nation. Look at verse 10, the effect. 
of those for those that pay tight. They bring all your tithe to the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And put me now, say the Lord of old, if I will not put to you the widow of heaven and pour you a blessing, there will not be room enough to receive it. That is breakthrough opportunities. I pray that every one of us that are paying our tithe, faithful, God will give us breakthrough opportunities. If you have not received it, it's so sure you will get it because the word of God cannot fail. Because it's breakthrough opportunities. <laughs> I remember those days, I did banking. You know, some people say, ah, Pastor, you all this, uh, I see your check. That, uh, I said, these are tithes that I must pay or offering. <laughs> one man, anytime he sees me, he say, this, this one, you always giving checks to, to church. You not give us. I say, these are mandatory things as a man of God, or as a child of God, I must do. Do you know this particular man Little thing, it will flush out from the banking industry. Little thing. Because when you pay your tithe, one of the things he does is that he makes sure that you will not spoil your vine, the source of your income. It will not destroy your vine. Because a lot of people will lose their source of income. Why? Because they don't pay their tithe. God will help us in Jesus' name. Then very importantly, you will make up your mind to give. How do you give? So let's somebody read 2 Corinthians 9, 6. Please. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. How do you give? You give. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Look at it, how you give now. He said, it that so spinely. Look at the word spinely. Spinely is from the word spear. Maybe somebody is coming now. He said, ah, what I can spear is ten dollars. Or one dollar. And God will be laughing in heaven. Because the word of God cannot be broken. Say that give us spinely. If you give what you can spear, he will give you what he can spear. But the Holy Spirit now said to us, you can see the word. He said that so bountifully, you give your best to God, he will give you his best. Why? Because Jesus said it in Matthew 9, Matthew 9, 1929. Matthew 1929. Matthew 1929. He said, whatever you give to God, you will give a hundredfold returns in this present life. It is what? Present life. We know we are going to hear the martial in heaven, but this life, <laughs> I remember those days, one Muslim, he will always bring his tithe. Then one day, he will come for prayer in Lagos. I, I, one day I, I was tempted, I said, ah, this man, you, why do you bring your tithe? He said, ah, don't you know that there is, there is blessing in tithe? That when you pay your tithe, really, it is get better. He was considered in it, but he does not come to church. But when he has problem, he comes to pray. In Jesus' name, he answer. But he still goes to his mugs, but and he brings his tithe. And God is blessing him. God will show mercy. <laughs> but I know that God will save his soul in Jesus' name. Then finally, another thing you must do is that your eyes or understanding must be open to know what to do. Your eyes or understanding must be open to know what you ought to do. Ephesians 1.18. Ephesians 1.18. Look at Apostle Paul. He was praying. It's a prayer that we as believers must pray continually. He says that the eyes of understanding be enlightened that he may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory inheritance in the said. The word of God is spiritual. There are hidden mysteries in the world. Until your eyes of understanding be open, you cannot get the hidden mysteries in the world. Until our eyes are opened, 
the word for your turnaround, you may not understand it. You may not understand it. I pray that our eyes of understanding be open. And that's why David said, David, the wise man, Psalm 119 verse 18, Psalm 119 verse 18, he said, open my eyes to see wondrous things out of the law. And Jesus prayed for disciples, Luke 24, 31. Luke 24, 31. Luke 24, 31. He said, about 31 and 45. He told, the Bible says, he opened their understanding. Luke 24, 31 and 45. I pray that our understanding be open in Jesus' name. Then finally, you must believe your pastor. You must, the pastor has declared now that this is a month of total turnaround. Some people don't even believe it. You must believe your pastor for this world to work. You must believe your pastor because the Bible tells us, South Korea 2020, he said, believe your pastor or your prophet. Your pastor is your prophet. Your pastor is your prophet. Believe. The pastor have told us this is a motto of great turn around. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? If you don't believe it, you not walk home. Why? The word of God tells us John 11 40. John 11 40. 40 he said, Blessed is she that believe there shall be a performance. John 11 40. You must believe your pastor. You must believe your pastor. Why? Because the word of God tells us, Hosea 12 13. Let me read this to you. Why pastors are very powerful, very important. Hosea 12, 13. Hosea 12, 13. And by prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by prophet, he was preserved. Let me put pastor there so that you don't get confused. By pastor, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by prophet, by pastor, were they preserved. Pastor, what they do is that they dish out the word. And that's why the Bible tells the Hosea 4 6. He said, My people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of what? And Azar 5 13, Azar 5 13 says, My people have gone into captivity because of the lack of knowledge. You're rounding up. Jeremiah 3 15, you can see the purpose of your pastor. Jeremiah 3 15. Why you must believe your, your pastor? Jeremiah 3 15. Jeremiah 3 15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yes. So God has given us a pastor that is feeding us according to the will of God. So you must believe him so that he can prosper. So that we can have total turnaround. Your pastor is a gift from God to you. So if you must get the total turnaround, you must see him as a gift and value him. Let me read it again. Your pastor is a gift from God. So for us to have the total turnaround, you must value him and appreciate the word he's speaking that God has given him so that we will not run in vain. I want to please stand up and tell God, Father, help me to believe my pastor. Help me to believe my pastor. Help me to believe my pastor so that I can prosper. Help me. Tell the Almighty God, help me to believe my pastor so that I will not be a castaway. Help me. Oh. In Jesus' name, I pray. I decree it shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us be seated, please. I'll take two minutes to. Is there any question? Any question? Something you don't understand? This is uh, digging deep. Any question? Any question? 
Any question? Okay, I'll use, <laughs> okay, what I usually do, I'll use my two, three minutes to, let me do a random check now, see whether people really, my brother, what did you gain today? 30 seconds. Um, rugged faith, um, the violence take it by force. The violence take, he said, rugged faith, the violence take it by. <laughs> when you are looking at the book, that is expo now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. Mrs. Doris, please tell us. What did you get today? I gained that, uh, violent, we do violent praise. Things can turn around. Yes, that's true. Because why is it so? Psalm 22, verse 3 says, He said, God is holy. He's a throne in our praises. You know, prayer is calling on God. But when you begin to praise God, God will begin to seek for you. Why? John 4, 20 to 24. John 4, 20 to 20. He said, God seeketh those that worship him in spirit and in truth. God will seek you out. Okay, let me ask the elder. Yes, sir. What did you get today? <laughs> um, right thinking. Right thinking. Yeah, because I know it helps a lot. And the way you pray over it as well, when you have a right thinking and you pray over it, of course you get you know, that which you yes. prayed for. You know, as he was speaking, the Holy Spirit reminded me, Proverbs 27, is about as a man taken it hard, so is Proverbs 27, as a man ticket in his heart. So people have become failure because of their thinking. Okay, let me ask the youth. Yes, what did you get today? <laughs> um, I learned the importance of um, listening to your prophet, to your pastor, and uh, paying tithes. Yes, okay. It is a very important thing to do. Okay. okay. <laughs> Maybe someone should say it in a smaller way so that so people will understand. <laughs> it spoke so fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, come back. Uh, <laughs> okay, Pastor. Uh, tell us what he said. <laughs> okay. Honor your pastor, yes. Finally, finally. Let me ask you, what did you gain today? <laughs> Speaking the right word, you know, yeah, you know, like Christians, there are things we go through, and then after praying, you on your own will say words that don't really follow up with what you're praying, yes. and, and you know, you want something, you're praying for that, and when you go there, you say, I, I hope I can get this, but you just pray, you're supposed to believe that you have it. Amen. Yeah, praise <laughs> the Lord. That right word is very important because after we have prayed, sometimes when people say, ah, that is difficult to, you have already spoiled your prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, mommy, last. <laughs> Tell us, what did you get? The God weighs our actions. Oh, so, com actions. yeah, complete obedience. Being obedient as Jesus was unto death. God weighs our actions. Why is it so? Because the Bible tells the first Corinthians 3 13. He says, Our work will go through fire. Our work will go through. <laughs> that means that, that means on the last day, some people will cry, oh, that there is no substance in their works. Let's think about it today. If Jesus come today, and waste your work, will it be burned or will it survive? If Jesus come to, you know, we're all running after dollars. I ask, when did you win so last? Because the Bible tells the poverty level 30, he said that winning so is wise. And if your work is passed through fire today, now, First Corinthians 10, 13. Will all of them be burned? I want you to just bow our head to God. Father, help me that on last day, I'll not be a castaway. I'll not be a castaway.
and tell the Almighty God, help me so that I will do the right thing. Help me to do the right thing. Maybe today you are saying, God, forgive me my sin. One way or the other, I'm not measured to your. You can just raise up your hand. Let me let's pray for mercy today. Maybe your work, you feel that at least. Raise up your hand and just say, Father, show me mercy. Father, forgive my sin. Jesus, I accept you afresh and anew. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name. Father, help us to follow it to the end. At the end, O oh Lord. Let only your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's welcome our pastor with a loud ovation. While standing.